Um, I want to look very much at um, some of the practicalities, but also um, some of the bigger issues that we're facing. Um, the, the, the topic is the world of uh, Warcraft and why we should care. And I think the first thing to look at is what is war? Because I think this is one of the fundamental issues which affects how the military should act and how we should use the military. What is war? You know, we are very casual about it, you know. Um, so President Trump is at war with Prime Minister Trudeau, right? That's, I've read that, okay? But of course, we know it. Manchester City fans are in a permanent state of war with Manchester United fans. But when people like me say war, I work for shape, clearly I mean tanks rolling across the border. So war is a term to be used carefully because it can be misinterpreted. But what is war is something that is fundamental to why the military should care about it. And what we've got up there, um, for those of you who are um, unfamiliar with it, is the famous Gerasimov slide. Um, there will be a deep sigh some of the people who've seen it far too often. This has often been interpreted as indicating how the Russians intend to fight conflict. And it was put up, it was first issued around 19, 2013 by General Gerasimov in an open source publication, and he is the chief of the Russian general staff. Um, it's not how the Russians plan to fight war, it's how they think war is fought. It's far more profound. Now, logically, if that's how they think war is fought, then that's probably how they're going to fight it. So it is an indication of how they see war will be fought by them. But it's more important than that is they think this is the nature of war. And actually, in general terms, I think they're right. So if you consider this is war, um, and you can see it, you'll see that the phasing of the operations starts covertly in phase one, works through escalation, and then initial conflicting actions, which is the prelim to war, phase three, then the crisis, which is fighting, then resolution, and then tea and medals. If you look at that, you will see that there's only one element which goes from phase one to the conclusion. There's only one element that straddles the blue, which is non-military, and the gray, which is military, and that's information confrontation. So the Russian view of how conflict is fought is that information confrontation starts at the beginning, runs right through to the end, and straddles military and non-military. And it's the only thing that does. And you'll also note that the phase one is covert. So what is war? Because if that is true, we are at war. And I think a lot of people would say, in many respects, what's going on now, you can see those phases unwinding. So that is a terribly important thing to analyze, not as saying what it says about the Russians, but what it says about their analysis of how the world is. And we should ask ourselves, are they right or wrong? And I think, actually, the answer might be, they're pretty much right. In which case, what does that mean for the military? Now, Gerasimov, um, last year, gave uh, one of his lectures in which he highlighted, again, that states in general, but also Russia in particular, postulate that achieving, quote, information dominance is an indispensable prerequisite of combat actions. So in other words, unless you are already winning the information, unless you've already set it up, you're going to lose because it's a prerequisite of combat actions. And that included mass media and social networks. So again, he's acknowledging and stating that for everybody, including Russia, information dominance is an indispensable prerequisite of combat actions. So again, this clearly means stuff for the military. Um, and Gerasimov is not just making this stuff up, it goes into their thing, but it also goes back into the dominating principles of war. Now, I'm aware that there's this 
conference bingo thing, which I'm assuming some of you have been filling out, and that there's been a big gap. That the thing on the top left, the Sun Tzu quote. <laughs> and I'm sorry for you, you are my target audience. That's another one, tick. Um, and so in this theater, tick, I'm gonna give you a Sun Tzu quote. Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. Now, that's Gerasimov. He is saying information dominance is an indispensable prerequisite of combat. Sun Tzu says victorious warriors win first and then go to war. So they link. And this is a conscious link. These, you know, the Russians do doctrine and they do their history. So, what is war? Well, clearly we're part of it. The Russians also um, talk about, they do not have a cyber domain like we do. Cyber in their doctrine is a element, a subordinate element of an information domain. So for them, cyber is like a golf club and the game is information. I would argue personally, but I am communications director, that cyber is not the lead element. Cyber is a tool, and information is the domain. So again, what does that mean for us? So fundamentally, what is war? I think it's pretty clear that war is a much bigger thing. And therefore, when we are at war, and when the military are involved, is also a much bigger thing. So why is STRATCOM so important for the military? Well, interestingly, and Christine mentioned about the say-do gap. So let's look at the doing. There's levels of war, pole mill, strategic, operational, tactical. The tools of information, kinetic and non-kinetic, lethal, non-lethal, soft, hard, the more, the lower down you go, the more tools there are. So if you are a spokesperson for NATO, what is your tool? Your tool is actually your own speeches, your Secretary General speeches, that kind of stuff. And then you give D and G, goes down through the chain to the military. What are our tools? Our tools, and you highlighted them, they're B-52s, they're Grippens, they're, they're F-16s, they're Typhoons. So actually, for STRATCOM, STRATCOM is about far more. So there's too many people who still see STRATCOM as public affairs on steroids. And it's not. It's about communicating. And everything, as was stated, is communicating. You know, the fact I'm wearing a tie. Earlier today, we saw one guy with a nice haircut, open neck shirt, and a leather jacket. He was sending you a message. He was saying, I'm not like you. So everything we do is messaging. So if you're dropping a bomb, you're messaging. If you're digging a well, you're messaging. If you're walking, you're doing your patrol with helmets on, you're messaging. If you're taking them off, you're messaging. So think of the range of tools. Almost all of those tools in the security world are in the realm of the military. The same thing with communication. How do you communicate? Who do you communicate with? At the political level, it's relatively easy. The cabinet office, Awana Lungescu, the NATO spokesperson, she talks to her office, she instructs. It's quite a small bubble. But if you want a organization like the military to do your messaging, it's complicated. Because you've got the strategic level, you've got the operational level, you've got the tactical level. You've got people who drop bombs, you've got people who dig wells, you've got air, land, sea. How do you get coherent messaging to all of those people? That's STRATCOM. So the coordinating function of strategic communications is far, far harder at the military level and far more important because I, as the lead communicator for ACO, I have to make sure that the whole of ACO knows what we want from the public affairs branch in the same building as me to the person who might be patrolling a street in Kosovo or ISAF. So again, 
we need to care because we need to get that message out because everyone is messaging. So STRATCOM is actually more important for the military because of the structural, organizational, and tools base than it is at the highest level, where PA on steroids will actually get you quite a long way. So we really need to get this right. So what are our challenges? We have a lot of challenges. One of the things is still up there, it's the phasing. Let's assume that the Russians are doing this, which I think is a fair assumption. Escalation is the point at which many of the military tools come into effect. We do not use PSYOPs early. It has to be approved by our nations, rightly so. But it means that a lot of the military capability is not used until in Gerasimov's stage, it's all over. So we need some top-level thinking about how we phase the use of military information tools. Because at the moment, we're basically waiting for the tanks to cross the border. But if we listen to Gerasimov and Sun Tzu, and actually our own military history, we know that those preemptive phases are actually critical. They set the tone. We need to do better on training and education. I have seen very few officers come through all the time from top to bottom. We do not have a professional military strategic communication in general. Some nations, Canada, a no notable, a noble exception with its PA people. The Germans do PA training. Uh, the Americans do a lot. Most nations, they train people for one, two, three weeks, or not at all. So we continually get in our nations, both for NATO offices and NATO nations, a bunch of usually very keen, very dedicated total amateurs. Total amateurs. So they come in, they have a vertical learning curve, they get to be reasonably good, then they're on to their next post and they never touch STRATCOM ever again. This is lunatic. If we all accept that STRATCOM is as important now as we all seem to accept, why is it that we have organized ourselves for permanent amateurism? Which is exactly what we've done. So that's something we need to look at. We also need to ensure that we are big enough to create a career, that we're big enough when we have a structure. Things like EFP, nephews, phrases like that, they're actually STRATCOM teams. But some of, the, some of the EFP units have got very small information elements, which again is crazy. Because frankly, if you've got a battalion of 600 people, you're not going to make a lunge from Moscow. And whether it's 600 people, or, 600 and, or whether it's 590, an extra 10 people in STRATCOM makes a hell of a lot of difference to your messaging. So we need to think, are we structured right for this? So these are real fundamental questions to take seriously what we say we take seriously. So the conclusion, we have to find a way of this smooth flow to ensure that our militaries are ready to support us to get success to prevent peace becoming crisis, and if crisis becomes war, to ensure we win it. Are we ready for that? Questions, please.